today I'm going to tell you guys about elephant care in zoological settings based on my experience as an intern at the San Diego Zoo. Uh, I just wanted to go over um, my daily routine, some training practice, the health practices that we did, enrichment research, and then the challenges that I found at zoos still face. Before we get into that, um, the San Diego Zoo has two parks, the actual zoo and the safari park. I was an intern at the safari park. The zoo has four elephants, and they're all pretty old and near the end of their life. And so everything about the zoo's herd and barns are designed to assist elephants towards the end of their life. And then the safari park is a younger herd consisting of now 13 African elephants. They just had a baby on August 12th. His name is Zuli. He's super cute. They are the largest breeding herd of elephants in America, so all of their barns are designed for reproduction and helping, you know, get those babies a good start in their, in their life. So the San Diego Zoo is an AZA organization. Um, AZA is the, is the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. It is a standard setting organization in um, the Northern Hemisphere. Most of uh, the zoos and aquariums are in the United States, but there are one or two in Canada. They um, gear all the organizations towards creating outreach, education, conservation, animal management, animal management in ways that benefit the zoo, animals, and the people, because that's what zoos are for. They do yearly checkups and conferences to make sure that all the organizations have consistent standards and are treating their animals and their programs the way that they should be. Um, in 2016, I was at the San Diego Zoo, so the whole zoo got like a facelift, and it was super fun. Um, and then it's really important for them to keep their standards consistent and up to date. The last time they had the conference, they changed the way that we train our animals, um, implementing a positive reinforcement, so things like that change every year at these conferences. And then not all zoos are AZA, and it's very easy to spot the ones that aren't. Um, AZA zoos have a quota for the number of animals they need to have in their collection, so if they don't come to a certain minimum, then they can't be AZA. They need to have a certain amount of space in all their enclosures, barrier restrictions, um, all that jazz. So as a trainer with our elephants, we had a daily routine. Um, we fed our elephants two to three times a day. We went through 16 bales of hay, 75 pounds of produce, and 15 pounds of pellet every day. We fed alfalfa and a timothy grass mix from some local farmers. Our produce consisted of carrots, lettuce, cucumbers, and yams, and celery. We noticed that our elephants liked the orange produce better than the green produce because they have a sweet tooth. And then the pellet is an extra nutritional value. It has um, just some minerals and nutrients and vitamins that they don't normally get in their diet, but that we've seen that they need to help um, have a better diet. And it's very sweet, so we call it like our jackpot treat, so we use it for training, and um, that's their big reward for doing something great, is we like overload them on this pellet. When we feed, it's sorted by family, so elephants have a matriarch system. Um, our matriarch was Swazi, she's our oldest elephant, and therefore the most respected. So it's her family, um, Andula, Ungani, and then we have two orphans, and then the boys, which were the two breeding bulls that we had. Right now we have one, and one of them just got moved to Arizona. So we feed them by that to make sure that they get their nutritional value. Cleaning, we had two yards, two round barns, two square barns, four holding yards, and two pools, along with various number of watering holes. Um, we went through two and a half trucks of waste and think like a big garbage truck. We went through two and a half of those every single day. Um, we had about, I wanna say about three acres worth of space for them to roam around on in their yards. But we went, we took out all the poop, we hosed out all the barns, we scrubbed the pools with bleach. Um, this had happened every day and it took a good like six hours to get it all done. Every animal gets about 15 minutes of training every day with um, some of the various trainers. And during that, tra during that training, they administer vitamin E, they do body checks, blood draws, um, they get pedicures, all that jazz. Is vitamin E an injection? No, it's um, a syringe. Or, so it, oral it's syringe. Mm, it's an oral syringe. So this is called the vestibule. It's in one of our larger yards. It's one of our favorite places to bring the elephants up to train because we have plenty of space to ask them to do lots of things. Um, this picture. Okay, so this was our large yard. It's called the East Yard. Um, it's one and a half acres with the largest pool. And then this is one of our elephants in that yard. We call him Mr. Boo Boo. Um, this was some of the behind the scenes stuff at our, in our barns. This elephant here in the middle, that's um, Mabu, Mr. Boo Boo. He's eight and a half feet tall. Um, as you can see, he still has plenty of space to grow. Um, this is Andula. She also has plenty of space to grow. And this is one of our younger elephants, and they still have plenty of space. So our barns were generally between 10 to 12 feet tall. Here's that same elephant, eight and a half feet tall, and he still has plenty of space to keep getting taller. Um, all of our enclosures have different barriers. So this 
holding yard has those um, vertical poles and then this tire hose thing. Um, this was here, so when we ask him to do feet placements, he has a comfortable place to put his foot when we have to check his feet for his pedicures. And then one of the pools, um, the pool actually wasn't that deep, so she's probably, this is Kosi, she's standing right now. This is one of our, this is Swazi's family, and this is one of the barriers that we use, and this is an electric fence. So when training, oh. training has evolved over the years. Um, the way we used to train, we used something called the woolly book, and you could be in the enclosure with the animal, there was no need for a barrier, and they almost used fear and pain to train the elephants. <coughs> So the woolly hook, you would wrap it around the elephant's leg, and if they did anything you didn't like or that was threatening to you, you would twist the hook, and it would cause pain to the elephant. Now, AZA regulates the use of positive reinforcement, so you now need to have a barrier between you and the animal. So the barrier prevents you from forcing the animal to interact with you. Everything is based on what the animal wants. So if you're having a bad training session and your animal wants to walk away, your animal can walk away and you can't do anything about it. So it's all about keeping things positive, um, only teaching behaviors that are beneficial to their health and mimic as many natural behaviors as you can. They really have been emphasizing that elephants aren't for show, so you can't teach elephants to like stand on one foot or like pick up a ball, and you can't display those behaviors on public for public view, because then we're taking the natural habitat of our elephants and we're making them a show, and that's not what zoos are about or animals are for show. It's just a way to observe them in the most natural habitat we can produce. Different health practices that um, the San Diego Zoo did was the elephants had a physical once, twice a year done by the veterinary team and their vet techs. Uh, elephants were trained to display every single part of their body, feet, legs, back, belly, ears, trunk, tusks, all of it, and they made sure that there were no um, nicks, marks, injuries, and that they were good to go. We collected weights weekly on our animals. This was mainly for our youngins to make sure that they were growing um, on the baby that they just had. He gets weighed every day to make sure that he's consistently gaining weight and growing. Um, if he stops gaining weight and growing, then we know that there's something wrong. It's very easy for them to get sick when they're that young in an enclosure like that. Um, then we do weekly urine samples collected from our ladies, uh, helps us track their reproductive track, um, help them find a good homeostasis for elephants, like what is a normal for them. Um, same with the blood samples, just trying to find out what is normal, make sure they're not stressed and they're having a good healthy life and then very controlled diet. So in this picture, as you can see, here's our little red needle disposal box. So we were doing um, blood samples. We do blood samples on the ear. So they're trained to put their side up to this fence here, present their ear and hold it still for a trainer to take blood. And then when they're done, they get a nice big treat. Um, this is our scale. So this is just like a paddle shoot and the sides can close in on the elephant. But so they're trained to stand on the scale with all four feet on it, be perfectly still for about 30 seconds while on a trunk target. So their trunk is like holding your hand pretty much. Um, and then when they're done, they walk off and get a big treat. But this shoot is for in case we have to do um, a procedure on the elephants, everything that we need to do our elephants can be done in our enclosure. So there's no need for us to transport them. So like you would be running cattle through a shoot, you stop them, you close them in, and then you do whatever you're doing to them. We can do that with our elephants if we need to. And they're trained to stand and let the <coughs> chute close in on them. We try and work with them in it about once a month just so then if we ever do have a need to put them in the chute and work with them, it's not terrifying and stressful. And then here in his hand, you can see the vitamin E syringe. What he asked her to do was put his, her, her, yeah, this is in body, put her trunk up and then he would shoot the vitamin E in her mouth. She has to hold, she can't swallow until he gives her the command to. Um, it's very important that the animals do things when we ask them to because we don't want to create any behaviors or um, actions that make them run the training session because if they run away with it, we could create some negative habits. So as an intern, one of the things that I was in charge of was enrichment. Um, enrichment, basically it's activities and tasks for elephants to do that keep them busy, keep them entertained, and encourage as many natural behaviors as we can. So there are many, many different kinds of enrichment, but some of the ones that we use at the zoo, we utilize digging, puzzles, reaching, scents, and then other miscellaneous things that don't have a category. So um, in the wild, elephants will dig for roots, and so we, they would bury produce all over the yard, and they have to go and dig it up in order to get their produce. Um, puzzle boxes, so kind of like how if you're shaking coins out of a piggy bank, we use that same concept with these puzzle boxes. So we fill it with pellet, scatter them across the yard, and the elephants are encouraged to pick it up with their trunks shake it around, kick it, throw it, do whatever they can to figure out how to get the, the treats out. 
Um, reach is a very common one. You'll see a lot of zoos do it, where they place food and produce just out of their reach. So they're encouraged to be creative on how they can get the food. Most of the time, they'll, they'll just come and knock it down for the little ones. Um, and then sense, this was something that we did a lot. Um, we took bedding from like different enclosures and scatter it across their enclosure. Um, we did it with lion urine and the rest of the day they were like on edge trying to find out where this predator was and it gave them something to think about and to do and it um, encouraged a lot of their natural behaviors of migrating around the yard and they kind of rearranging things that they wanted to. And their miscellaneous enrichment things that we did is so we'd freeze treats and water and create like a tree of it and we'd hang it up high and they'd have to pull it down and they would smash it and then they'd get the treats out like that. Um, my project, I created a slingshot, and so we put produce into burritos. We'd sneak up behind the elephants and we slingshot the produce into the yard, sent them running across the yard, but they came back, saw it was food, and got really curious. Um, we made a maze, then they have the pool, and all that stuff. Um, enrichment is important because it makes happier elephants, and happier elephants perform better behaviors, and then we get better results like reproduction, we get more babies. Um, the more enrichment, the less zoochotic behaviors we see, and zoochotic behaviors are like the stereotypical behaviors that you've seen do. So for elephants, it's the swaying is the big one. The more they have to do, the less they have to learn how to cope. So instead of creating these weird behaviors like swaying and things that people don't like to see, they can spend the rest of their day playing and running around the yard and trying to figure out all the things that we have created for them to do. And then um, AZA is currently working at a new elephant standard of requiring a certain amount of enrichment every day for every animal. They're currently doing a project where all the zoos are um, collecting data of the enrichment that they do and how often they change it and all that, our whole enrichment scheme to try and find out what is the good amount of enrichment for every elephant to have and how often can a zoo be required to change it because there's only so many things you can do for enrichment. And then here is one of our elephants. You'll see her right here. This is one of our, oh, it's not gonna play. Um, one of our elephants, we created a ball, we stuck bamboo sticks in it, and then we put pellet inside. So she had to take the bamboo sticks, either pull them out or bang the ball against the wall to get the treats out, and it was super fun to watch. Um, and then this is a mud bath, so this is Swazi's family again, wallowing in the mud. We buried produce in, in the mud, so while well, little, little baby elephant here is taking a mud bath, Swazi's trying to dig for the food. And then eventually the rest of the elephants join them. And then here's my slingshot. You can see one of our elephants up here being like, what are you doing? So we would we slung the, they were like burritos, into the enclosure. They would land close to the elephants. We didn't hit them, but they'd land close to them. They'd scatter, they'd come back. And then the more we did, the more elephants came. And it was actually really funny to watch. And then this is another one of my enrichment projects that I made. I jeered a box to sit on top of a building. And then with three strings, each string had a different thing attached. One had a stick, one had a carrot, and one was just plain old string, um, and it was for one of our bull elephants in his holding yard, and he was encouraged to grab the carrot, the stick, or the string. When he pulled, the produce would fall on top of him, the box would fall into his enclosure. So he had to figure out how to pull the last string, because he figured out the carrot really fast, figured out the stick really fast, it took him like all night to figure out the string. And then um, for the research side of it all, um, Zoos are doing, well, in San Diego, zoos are doing reproductive research, so our urine collections try to find homostasis and find out what their hormone um, levels look like when it's time to reproduce and just during a normal day. Um, we are doing semen collections. I was actually able to be involved in that with my internship. They're trying to find out the age elephants become most sexually mature and then doing analyzation on the sperm trying to understand what it, like, what it looks like and the actual physiological side of it. And then they're trying to create a way to store the semen, so if a zoo would call us and then we would semen for one of our bulls, we could send them the semen instead of sending them our bull. Um, must and males, males go into must when it's time to mate, but we don't know anything about must. We don't know what triggers it, we don't know when it comes, when it goes, we don't know the order that it comes in, because for the bachelor herds it comes in different, um, different times for each of them. So just trying to understand what it is and if there's any connection to it from the females or on their hormone side. And then a social, from a social behavior standpoint, we know that elephants um, have a matriarchy system so the females have their own social structure. The oldest female is the most respected, but how do the males know and interact with the females and do any of their social behaviors have anything to do with their migration behaviors? So it's just a lot of trying to understand what elephants do and why. Okay, we have time for a couple of questions if we want. San Diego Zoo, how many have been there? Okay, a few of us. Oh my God, beautiful place. I could ride around on top of those buses I told you that forever. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah. Have you ever been to the a an AZA meeting? Can, they have a conference once a year, don't they? Yeah, I was able to help set up the one at the San Diego Zoo, but it came when I left. When you left, yeah. yeah. I would love to go to one of those. Yeah, Rebecca, you worked at the zoo this summer. Yeah, too. actually, the um, yeah, American yeah, Association of too. Zookeepers has their conference this year at the Indy Zoo, okay. so that's like also really interesting. Yeah, I would love to go to one of those meetings where yeah. they talk about all this stuff about you know the semen preservation. Yeah, it's easier to send semen versus the bull, right? You know, and musk, whatever that is. Yeah. Very neat. Allie, that was 